Hey there guys, Crossflux here, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. In the last episode, we took a quick dip in the Waterfall Pond, and eh, we kind of came back slightly empty-handed, I suppose you could say. But we did round off the episode with a friendly fight against Shiftry's team in the Makuhita Dojo. In today's episode, I figure let's uh, talk to the townsfolk and see what else is happening in the square. Oh, who is that over there? Never seen it before. It's not from around these parts. No more. I can't walk anymore. I'm falling down. Oof. Goodness, it needs help. You can say that again. Where? It's Skipper's house. It's also our rescue team's base. Oh, did you maybe rescue me? Thank you! <laughs> it's okay, there's no need for thanks. Rather than that, what happened? Yes, I'm named Spinda. I like to travel. I've been traveling all over seeing the sights and other Pokémon. It was on my travels that I heard rumors of a Mirage Pokémon. Mirage Pokemon? Yes, that's it. Isn't it exciting? Ever since then, I've been traveling all over in hopes of seeing the Mirage Pokemon. But I've had no luck. Finally, I become dizzy from fatigue. And I must have passed out. Oof. I, I'm giving up on my quest. I'm simply worn out. Wait a second, are you sure you won't regret giving up that easily? Easily, Lizzie. Now hold on a second, this Spinda here says it's been traveling all over the world. That must have taken a long time. It is to say, this Spinda's not giving up without a heavy heart. But I... I've reached my physical limit. If I push myself any further, I'll collapse again. It's not good for my health. Please, I want you to have this. We received... something from Spinda. Okay, are we supposed to be excited? What is this? It's a clear wing. Clear wing? Yes, I found it on my travels. It's a wing of some sort. It's transparent, but if you hold it up just like this, see, depending on the light, it takes on many different colors. At first I thought it was just pretty to look at, but after checking around, it appears to be related to the Mirage Pokemon somehow. But I couldn't learn anything beyond that. <laughs> it's very disappointing. But I'm giving up. Uh, you okay there, Spinda? Uh, yeah, exactly. Are you okay? You're still unsteady on your feet. Oh no, when I walk, I always totter. It's fun that way. Bye bye Okay, just be safe. Don't drive! Clearwing, huh? I don't have a clue what this is all about. But the Mirage Pokemon does interest you, right? I think Zatu's the one to ask for something like this. Zatu should be at the peak of the Great Canyon. We should go. Uh, well, Alakazam is still in town, and doesn't Alakazam still know a decent amount? Maybe, uh, maybe we should ask him first? Nah, that's not actually going to work. We're going to have to travel through the Great Canyon, but because that's such an easy dungeon at this point in the game and I've already shown it off, I'm going to cut ahead to us completing it where we can finish talking to Zatu about this. Actually guys, now that I have my uh, team put together, instead of heading straight to the Great Canyon, I figure let's actually buy some stuff from the Wigglytuff Club because I forgot to mention that now that this is post game, Wigglytuff has restocked his friend areas and they're actually important this time around. Not just for recruiting Pokemon, certain friend areas are actually required in order to participate in certain post game dungeons. The first of these areas is the Serene Sea. This actually pulls double duty in this regard, as it unlocks both the Grand Sea and the Faraway Sea dungeons. The next friend area on this list is the Secretive Forest. This one unlocks the Dark Knight Relic Dungeon. So I'll be showing all these dungeons and stuff at a later date. I just wanted to go ahead and purchase the friend areas now while it crossed my mind to do so. So the next one to buy is the Furnace Desert. 
This unlocks the desert region friend area. The next two dungeons, or the next two friend areas you have to buy together, and that's the Age Chamber AN and the Age Chamber O question mark. You can kind of guess based on the weird names of the friend areas that these hold the unknown Pokemon. And buying both of these together are required to unlock the unknown relic dungeon, which has only unknown in it. So that's really for the collectors, but I gotta buy it to show it off. And finally, the last one I need to buy here is the Southern Islands. Not only is this important for a dungeon, it's actually important for the story too. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy it now while I still have the money. Whew, that cleaned me out. Good thing I did all those uh, rescue missions and stuff off screen. Anyways, blah blah blah. Anyways, now with all that shopping out the way, time to head to the Great Canyon and I'll meet you at the Hill of the Ancients. Alright, so the Great Canyon wasn't too dangerous there. I actually managed to recruit a Murkrow as well. What is it? Have you reason to see me? Hmm, this is a clear wing. I see. About the Mirage Pokemon. That is what you wish to know. Wah! The Mirage Pokemon. I know a little about it. However, there are Pokemon that live, breathe, and prosper with the very land. They rage with the eruptions of volcanoes, roar as one with thunder, and race with the north wind. They are said to be shadows, shadows of the Mirage Pokemon. To the northwest, there lies a large island, an island known as the Three Fields. There is one such field, the Fiery Field. One of the Pokemon, the shadow of the Mirage, is there. Go. You must go to the fiery field. The answers you seek, perhaps they await you there. And perhaps your voice as well, Lizzie. Man, you were awfully quiet in that cutscene there. Well, now that we know where to head, Alf, I say let's prepare for the fiery field. No. Morning, but only by time. A time so early in the morning that everyone is still in bed. Hmm. Seems like something important is going on. What is it? What's happening outside? What's sound? Something's coming closer. Whoa. What was that? What just happened? Something huge flew by at an incredible speed. It seemed to be going toward the mountain range in the north. Ugh. Still sleepy. Still early, I guess I'll catch more sleep. Must not have been that important, huh, Skipper? Several hours later. Okay, if it was still morning and it was several hours later, what is this? Skipper sleeping in until like noon or something? So much for a rescue team leader. Lazy bum. Hey, Skipper. Skipper, wake up. Yeah, come on. Now I'm with Lizzie on this one. Skipper needs to wake up. You awake? There's some sort of commotion down at the square. Let's take a look. Look, Skipper, everyone's gathered. Hey, it's just like old days. Ay ay ay! I do not deserve this! I am outraged! Well, what's up, everyone? Up! 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 How could it be up, I ask you? My beautiful shop, my fine wares were stolen from me. Many, many TMs are simply gone! Spirited way, their clouds fill my heart. My bank wasn't hit, but these are frightening times. Is the storage okay? No problem. Nothing is stolen from under my eye. This mom is not about to make a stupid mistake like that. <laughs> Are you insinuating that we were robbed for being careless? Now wait. Tell me, Kecleon. You saw this thief? Hmm? Well, not very clearly I didn't. When I saw it, it had already taken off. Taken off? You mean it flew away? Yeah. It flew off in yonder direction, yeah. At tremendous speed, too. The yonder direction. That would be the northern range. I'd say it's a country mile away. Since we're using all these southern terms. It's impossible to determine what that thief is, so we'll need to investigate this matter properly. Yes, I beg for justice. My business faces ruination. Skipper, wanna look into this? 
Uh, without really giving a yes or no response, we just take on the investigation. So now all of a sudden we go from having absolutely nothing to do to having everything in the world to do. I say, let's blow them both off. I don't think there's enough time in the video to take care of either of these two missions, so I'm actually going to take care of a couple more missions in the Makuhita Dojo just to fill out the time. So I'm going to prepare a team real quick and I'll meet back in just a flash. Alright guys, I assembled a team that specialized in taking down rock and ground type Pokemon. And by that, I mean I just have Dotson for the job. I didn't want to use Skipper because I figure his level's getting a little too high compared to the others and I don't want anyone else to fall behind. So I formed a team out of Dotson and filled it with Grunge and Grimm, since Lizzie and Tesla would both be weak to this particular dungeon that I'm about to take on. So who's the team in question this time? Well, none other than Golem's team Rumble Rock. So, he sounded pretty tough since he was ready to take on the task of heading to the Magma Cavern. So, we'll see just how tough his team really is. So, his dungeon's not really that bad. However, his dungeon is probably worse than the boss fight itself. So, unfortunately, spoilers, that means the boss fight's not going to be that bad. Especially if you bring in Pokemon that are able to exploit rock and ground weaknesses. So, the only things you can find in his dungeon are Gravelers, and what makes them a pain is that they all use Magnitude, which, as you know, hits the entire floor. So especially if you have at least even one Pokemon on your team that's weak to an attack, you can't really protect them against Magnitude just by like swapping positions or anything like that. As long as they're in that room, they're gonna get hit by it. So that's probably the worst thing about this dungeon here. Um, other than that, I should say, uh, I didn't really explain the story events that well. Basically, to trigger the event with the Spenda and, you know, getting the whole clear wing thing, you have to complete both the Stormy Sea and the Solar Cave in order to trigger that event. And then, to trigger the lot, uh, the Thief event that, uh, we just witnessed, you have to purchase the Southern Island Friend Area, which I mentioned earlier in the episode, as well as having completed the Solar Cave. So that should do, that should be it for all the explaining on how to trigger those two events, I think. And if for whatever reason I remembered that incorrectly, I'll throw up a thing on screen that will uh, correct that. Anyways, after two floors, just like last time, we are introduced to Golem's team. And of course Dotson's able to make quick work of him since he's able to expose a quad weakness to grass with that bullet seed. <laughs> I forgot, I still have Grunge's uh, tactics set to get away, so he or she is not going to be going after these Gravelers. I guess I'll go ahead and set it back now while I still remember. Tactics, go after foes. There we go. I had to set it to get away because Grunge ran out of power points in the Great Canyon, and so it wasn't able to really do anything, so to keep it safe I decided to have it just keep running away from everything. So with Team Rumble Rock's defeat in our hands, we're rewarded with a Ginseng. I'm also going to take this same team in real quick to take on one other team because there's still time. This time we're going to take on Octillery's Team Constrictor. Now this dungeon is actually a little bit on the tricky side. And once again, or not once again, but in opposition to uh, Team Rumble Rock's dungeon, it's not really because of the boss fight. It's or it's not because of the dungeon itself. It's because of the boss fight. Wow, I'm starting to stumble over my words a lot. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, yeah, even though these tentacles can actually pose a little bit of a problem if you're underleveled, like I am here, um, it's the boss fight that's really dangerous. And I'll explain more about that boss fight once we get to it. For now, I gotta focus on just surviving, since Dotson has always been and probably always will be the weakest link on any of my teams. I should probably spend a little bit of time leveling him up a bit more. And it'd also be nice if I was able to get him to his final evolution, but we'll see how that goes. I'm kinda surprised I haven't found any stairs just yet. Normally I'm pretty good at finding stairs in the dojo missions. And wow, this supersonic is really confusing. Never really had this much trouble with it before. Alright, well, hopefully we'll find the stairs pretty soon. Well, asking you shall receive. Second floor hopefully shouldn't be that bad. Second verse, same as the first. So 
Oh uh, yeah, nothing but tentacles will pop populate uh, Team Constrictor's dungeon. So they're a little annoying because they have long range bubble beam as well as you've seen uh, supersonic. But if you're able to kind of snipe them from afar with your own long range moves, then they shouldn't be that big of a deal. And of course, Grunge here has to go and use up one of my precious reviver seeds. Oh well. Grunge has paid his or her dues already. I suppose it's worth uh, keeping around even though it's eating up a reviver seed or two. Alright, we should be closing in on those stairs pretty quickly here. I decided not to speed up this part of the video just because eh, the dojo missions usually don't take that long anyways. And I'm mostly trying to aim for that 15 minute mark to kind of keep it consistent with most of the other videos in the Let's Play. So. Yeah, I know most of the post-game dungeon videos haven't uh, been close to 15, they've been closer to 20 minutes, but unfortunately there's nothing I can really do about that. That's just the nature of how these post-game dungeons are going to work, because post-game dungeons are pretty long. Most of them get even longer than what we've seen before, so that's something you're going to have to look forward to. Oh, come on Grunge, don't use up another Reviver Seed. Wow. Grunge is doing really bad in this dungeon for some reason. Not really sure what's going on there. But anyways, finally, we're introduced to the boss fight. And I really like this boss fight with Team Constrictor, because you actually have to play it kind of a certain way. Each of these Pokemon here, Octillery, Tentacruel, and Cradilly, all have long-ranged moves, and they have really nasty status effects if you get in close. So the goal is to snipe them from afar with your own long-range moves. Because if you have to get in close, they'll keep you locked down with Wrap and Confuse Ray and stuff like that. So ultimately, the best strategy is to just snipe them from afar with your own super effective moves, with, you know, Grass and Electric being the go-to moves there. But guys, with that third ginseng in our inventory there, I say we'll go ahead and call the video here. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll pick up where we left off in the next episode. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys then.